Well, we stayed at the um, Morgan City Public Docks last night. It wasn't the best dock in the world, but you know, listen, it got us uh, up against the slip. Uh, we had electricity, and um, and that was nice because uh, you know after anchoring the night before, it was kind of nice to have power and uh, be able to run the air conditioners without having to worry about the generator or whatever. So. Um, we are up and about this morning, and we are about to take off. The idea is to make it to Homa today. It'll be a pretty long run, but that's the uh, that's the plan. So, see you out on the water. We're just waiting here for the Bayou Bluff locks. Um, we're standing behind the San Antonio, uh, waiting for her to go in. It looks like she's carrying two tanks of benzene. So. Not sure if the lock effort is gonna have us just paddle on through or we're gonna wait for him to come out first. So we shall see. This turned out to be another flood control lock without an elevation change. So you've seen these before, I'll just go fast motion. The interesting thing here was, uh, I'll slow it back down at the end, you'll hear the uh, lock operator let a tugboat know there's a sailing boat coming out and to just go ahead and stand back and you'll hear him acknowledge it with Roger, Roger. Just uh, kind of cleared out of Morgan City proper where there's a bunch of shipyards and an area all the tug captains refer to as the Wiggles because the river kind of wraps around a few different times. So a little bit tight of a squeeze as those guys swing back and forth with these, you know, 600 foot long barges or whatever they are when they're all strung out long. So, been a good trip so far this morning. Uh, decided to sit on this side, a little bit of shade over on this side this morning. So we're making a much better. Uh, much better at speed over ground, so we're doing 5.8 right now, which is a lot better. Um, we were definitely fighting some currents yesterday coming out of the Atchafalaya River and heading out, uh, heading out toward the Gulf and the bays. We just went into an area called Alligator Bayou, and it's starting to look like uh, our area of Louisiana. A lot of cypress trees along the side of the road, uh, almost on the side of the road, along the side of the, uh, the ICW here. So. Did you see the alligator? No, it's just a duck. You saw a duck too? No. Did you see the duck in the alligator's mouth? No. There's one. There's one. There's one. Yes, I see that. That's a that's called an egret. That's a type of bird. But did you get to see the alligator swimming in the water? Uh, we'll get to home. Let's see, today's Saturday, so we'll get to Homa Saturday evening. It looks like a show on our arrival at 2.08. My guess is it'll be closer to 3.15. We have one real bridge we have to wait on, so we'll call it and get a little bit close. Uh, it's only a 40-foot clearance when it's not open, so we'll definitely need that one opened up. Um, we're going to stay at the uh, Homa City Dock, which is kind of right on the ICW underneath, um, underneath the overpass for the freeway, which is but, uh it's a 73 foot bridge, so not an issue with staying under there. If you recall this morning I mentioned that we were waiting at the locks behind the San Antonio. Uh, we ended up going through the locks first and the San Antonio came through right after us. He was making slightly better time than we were. Um, we knew this from the AIS and I'll show a little bit in the video on how I utilize AIS when we're on a trip. But uh, I'll speed this up, it's kind of interesting. Um, he called us and uh, you know said he was moving a little quicker and we told him we'd go ahead and move on over and slow down and let him go on past. 
Um, but I want you to get a sense of just how big this is. I'm going to speed this up at five times the speed just to get through it fairly quick. But pretty, pretty amazing the size of these guys. And then once he goes by, you'll notice all the seagulls that hover around the back of it looking for all the fish that get churned up in the water behind the tugs. Kind of cool. This scene is pretty common. It repeats dozens of times every day, um, typically with the vessels going in the opposite direction as you are. Um, going in the same direction, you're running about the same speed most of them are. They travel between four and a half and six and a half knots. If they have a load, uh, they'll get up as high as seven and a half and eight knots when they're what they call a light boat, which is just a, a tugboat without a barge. So here are some of the common scenes on the ICW. These work boats rafted up along shore from time to time. Lots of signs about petroleum lines under the water and not to anchor or dredge. And just some guy, probably with a cooler full of beer, relaxing and fishing. Uh, I wish I were him. It looks like fun. So I love having the dedicated AIS um, display. Let me show you how I go ahead and use it. We're actually in a position now where we're in pretty good shape. So I, I'll show you the filtered setting in a minute. But basically what I've done is not, I'm sure you can see the screen here. In the center of the screen, there are two blocks. There's actually a circle that happens to be me. And then there's another um, tug directly in front of me. It almost looks like it's directly on top of us in this setting I have. And then we have one approaching us. So as I go through my um, selections, there's the, uh, there's the one that's directly in front of us. I choose him. He's 0.12 nautical miles away. His course over ground is 6.5 knots. And he's bearing, uh, one, one, uh, his bearing is um, 178, his course over ground is 119 true. So I know he's going the same direction I am. The nice thing is, I'm gonna go back to this home screen. If I scroll up to this guy coming at us, I get a bunch of information, I'm gonna hit select. If he was actually displaying his true vessel name, it would show up at the top. Instead, it's showing his MMSI number, which would allow me to call him using DSC on the VHF. I don't typically do that just broadcast out to him. But it's showing me a lot of good information. One, his bearing is basically zero degrees. So he's, uh, his course over ground is 300 true. He's 0.72 nautical miles away. He's doing 7.2 knots, so he's moving pretty quick. I'm guessing it's a light boat without a barge. The nice thing about this is I can actually see exactly where they are. I can set a closest point of approach, so we're gonna come within 0.01 nautical miles of one another, which makes sense we're in a channel. But in order for this to be valid um, or useful, you have to filter out everything else. So right now, there are actually 11 targets showing up uh, on the display. 35 of them are filtered out and not showing at all. Some are outside of the range that I've selected. I'm gonna show you what I do. I go into my setup on, on my device and specifically to the profile settings. And I have four different profile settings. This one just happens to be Harbor, which is what I use for the ICW. So choose settings and uh, harbor profile setup so to filter out vessels I don't really need to know much about I set a target speed filter basically anytime somebody's doing less than 0.2 knots it doesn't show up on the display that helps me avoid uh, seeing the clutter of all the tugs that may be just banked up or are tied on the side of the uh, ICW that's the first one the next one is the target range filter and I have that turned off. The next one is the guard, um, the guard alarm range, and I have that one off as well. And now we go to closest point of approach. So unless we are going to come within 0.3 nautical miles of one another, I don't have it automatically sound my alarm. It still displays them, it just doesn't sound the alarm. It also will not display the alarm until they are within 10 minutes of our closest point of approach. Now, this is something you gotta be cautious of. I only do this when I'm running the ICW because on average, the, the vessels are going under seven and a half knots. So there's plenty of time to react to one another. Even with my speed at six, with my speed at six and him at 7.2 closing, it's, uh, it's still plenty of time to react. 
The next one is the um, closest point of approach of alarm speed. If their boat is not coming at us at 0.5 knots, I filter it out. And then the last one is my speed. I've also set this to any time I'm traveling less than one knot, not to sound the alarms. And I did this primarily for when I'm having to idle at a lock or a bridge, I don't want to have continual alarms. I can see the traffic that's around me, so there's no sense in sounding the alarm. So these are the profile settings that work really, really well for me. Hopefully everything showed up on the screen right there. And just to give you an idea, let me go ahead and go back to my home screen. And you can see already how close this tug is now. You see it based on the closest point of approach. Let me set my plotting range to one and a half nautical miles. And you can see the guy coming at us right here and the one that is actually directly in front of us. But given the time of his last uh, broadcast was eight minutes ago. So, uh, you know, it takes a little bit, uh, a little bit for it to refresh. But anyway, that's my settings. That's what I find really works useful. Hope you guys do too. So it turns out that the boat coming at us that we saw in the last demonstration of the AIS was not actually a light boat, but it was a tug pushing two empties. Um, it kind of becomes obvious that they're empty when you see just how high they're riding on top of the water rather than the water line being below those things that look like teeth across the front of the barge. As we got closer to Homa, we saw some interesting sights, fishing boats on the side of the road and then some gorgeous homes as we started to get um, just into the uh, area of Homa. You can see the setup in these, you know, little canals behind folks' houses right off the ICW. Right after we passed this bend, we went ahead and prepared for our last opening bridge, which I'm going to go ahead and just run here in fast motion. You can see all the floating plants that were just kind of floating down the ICW at this point in time, which was a little odd, but we, uh, we got through this last bridge and um, we're just another mile or so from the Homa Municipal Marina. So the marina is actually just up here between these two bridges. So we're definitely getting close at this point in time. You can see the clouds are sort of threatening a little bit with some potential rain, but honestly, we were just looking forward to it. It was still a fairly early time of the day. We were gonna be able to tie off, and um, the plan was that because of this section of the ICW is kind of neat, it's narrow, and there's a few little um, shops or stores or restaurants along the edge, or so we thought. We thought it'd be kind of fun to untie the dinghy and take a little run with the girls, uh, you know, up and down this part of the ICW. As it turns out, there was what looked like a restaurant kind of behind us on, off the, um, the, the port side. However, uh, when we did hop in the dinghy later um, and run down there, it turns out it was just a bar and we opted not to uh, take the girls in there. Um, it wasn't like they served food, it was just a bar. But it was certainly a nice looking place with outdoor seating and whatnot. So we kind of thought that was going to be pretty nice actually. We had called ahead to the harbor master and he was going to meet us down at the dock to catch a line and turn on the electricity for us at the slip we asked for. Um, we went ahead and requested the one closest to the ICW mainly because we were afraid it might be a bit shallow and while we would get a little bit of wake from barges and tugs running by in the middle of the night we, um, we liked the idea of an easy exit. Um, our plans for tomorrow were such that we knew we were going to have a, uh, honestly, a long day, and we didn't want to have to potentially maneuver around somebody in the morning. We wanted to just untie, back out, and kind of head back in the same direction. So as we pulled up, you'll notice that there is a boat. We saw him pull in and tie right there where we were about to uh, pull in. I'd kind of honk the horn and tried to signal to him, but he wasn't quite getting it. Um, the gentleman in the green shirt is actually the harbor master who was down there to meet us. So he, uh, he was kind enough to walk down and, and suggest to the guy that he goes ahead and moves forward. Um, so we were just sort of hovering here a little bit. And it's interesting, there's a pretty good current here. So I was starting to get a little nervous that it was going to carry me into that wall ahead of time. Uh, I'm sure this guy thought I was being a little bit of a jerk here because I was getting pretty close to him as he was just walking his boat uh, up along the bulkhead, but I didn't want to have to turn around and try and maneuver. I'm not sure if you saw it, but there was actually a barge coming at us, and it's pretty darn narrow right there. So um, I just kind of kept sticking my nose right here by this guy while he pulled his uh, his boat forward a little bit. Uh, all in all, it was uh, it was a good a good easy way to dock, and I was pleased to see a boat in front of us actually from uh, from Kima as well. Um, so we got to meet some great friends, and in the next episode I'll talk a little bit about the information they were able to share with us because they 
certainly gave us information about the locks and lock closures um, that had us rerouting a little bit or at least changing our approach. So um, the, next, uh, the next episode we'll go ahead and show what we were doing with the girls since there was a playground just to the right here and we got in early enough that let us walk on into town and get some supplies and have dinner and uh, you know all kinds of good stuff since we weren't able to go to that little place in the dinghy. Um, so with that I think we'll go ahead and end this video as Deb tosses the lines over to Ray, the harbor master. Oh, by the way, this is a great municipal marina. If you ever get an opportunity to come through this part, I would certainly suggest stopping. The water is actually fairly deep and we could have easily pulled up. There's a pump out station right there parallel to that other sailboat. Um, it's $25 with power and water and pump out. Um, which, you know, it seems like a great deal to me. This is a nice little marina. There's not a lot right here. There's a, about two or three blocks up. There's a couple of gas stations and some stores, um, little restaurants. Um, there's a laundromat. I know last time Deb and I were through here five years ago or so, um, this was about six or seven days into our trip, and we, uh, we carried a basket full of laundry up and just, you know, sat at a laundromat and got, to, got caught up on that. So... Um, all in all, this is a good time. Uh, you can see Ray tossing the line back to Deb, and at this point I've got a spring line attached in the back here, and, you know, we're getting all set up. So, uh, again, if you, uh, if you come through here, I would certainly recommend this place. Good, good location. And, and home is a nice little town, too. Tell you what, folks, while we finish tying up, I'm going to ask that everybody, um, please do me a favor. If you could put a comment below and let me know if you've stopped at one of these um, marinas along the way, especially if you've stopped at this Homer City Marina, what was your thoughts? And also, it would really help if you would go ahead and click on the like just below this video. It does help us a little bit in uh, where we show up in the search results, and we're certainly trying to build a little bit of an audience for this particular channel. So um, I want to thank you for that ahead of time. Do please hit the like, and love to see your comments about what you think of the Homa Municipal Marina as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for weekly updates and like this video.